All right, guys, welcome to another episode of CUDA Education. I'm your host, Nicholas Main. Today, uh, what we're going to talk about is warp divergence and uh, how it affects performance. So I have some code here and, you know, uh, this video is just to, to briefly go through the code and to, to get you guys uh, pointed in the right direction in terms of what warp divergence is and how it affects performance. Mm -hmm. Um, guys, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, visit the website, kudaeducation.com, uh, follow me on Twitter at Kuda Education. If you have any questions, the best place to get me is probably on the YouTube video. So just comment on the YouTube video and also don't forget to donate. Uh, there's time and energy in creating these videos and what have you on the website. So just go to kudaeducation.com and on the upper right hand side, there is a link to donate to the cause. Okay, so today, um, this, this code right here, we're having a 50 million element array. And basically all I'm doing is just taking the threads associated with processing the array and creating some divergence. Uh, the 50 million <laughs> array headline is just for window dressing, just for, you know, media personality kind of stuff. So you guys, it catches your eye and you watch the video and all that. But, you know, basically I'm just taking 50 million threads and trying to make it diverge um, within the warp. So you see how it affects performance. Okay. So before I even get into the code, I'm going to run this, uh, this program. So this is what we have. We have a 50 million array. We have about 195,000 blocks and 256 threads in each block. The elapsed time on the GPU is about, let's say 29 milliseconds, right? All right. So that is um, with the warp divergence, okay? So I'm just gonna go down here and I'll explain, don't worry. And comment out comment out this section, which basically causes the warp divergence, right? So now we're going to rebuild. And run it. Now we get our result. So same, pretty much the same parameters, but we see that uh, the elapsed time is now seven seconds. So it's way less than uh, our previous example. And it's basically because of this divergence here. We took it out, right? So you see how divergence, warp divergence can really hamper performance um, in your code. So let me go through the code and talk a little bit about warp divergence. So in a nutshell, to keep it as simple and basic as poss possible, the GPU processes stuff 32 threads at a time, right? So you, you have 32 threads and the GPU takes those 32 threads and tries to follow a set of instructions with those 32 threads. Now, ideally, you would want all 32 threads or 32, you know, each block of 32 threads. You want you would want within, within uh, each block of 32, you'd want it to follow one instruction path. You don't want it to, to start following separate instruction paths. Like you don't want the first 16 to follow one set and the other 16 to follow the other set. You don't want the first 16 to, to, to follow the if statement, um, you know, obviously the if being true, and then the other 16, the if being false, or the first 10 being true and the, the next, uh, 22 being false, right? Or vice versa. You want all 32 threads within the warp to follow the same set of instructions. Why? The reason is that 
if you start if you start having threads within the warp follow different paths then you um you waste a cycle what i mean by that <clears throat> warps process through cycles so the 32 threads are basically processed through cycles so if if they all follow the same path then you process all 32 threads in one cycle however if they follow different paths then they process in different cycles so maybe let's say the first 10 follows the if statement as it being true then on one cycle you would process 10 threads the other 22 uh, threads, the other 22 threads are left idle because remember, you could only do one set of instructions per cycle. So the first 12 are processed with the first cycle and the other 22 are, are sitting idle while the first, um, the first 12 are being processed. On the next cycle, you process the other 22, right? So this is more time consuming because now you're doing two cycles to process the full warp. Whereas if you didn't have divergence and, and all 32 were following the true statement or all 32 were following the else statement, then you would process the whole warp or the whole 32 threads in one cycle. That's basically what warp divergence is, right? So whenever you're coding and you know that you know these the, all your threads are, are are sectioned off into 32 32 uh thread warps or 32 thread you know chunks you want to make sure that your your processing minimizes the number of 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 uh divergence or the number of branching that you get with if else statements and you know while loops and all this stuff because you know, the more the more segmentation you have is is the more expensive it is because you start wasting cycles. Because remember, the warp has to process, you know, within that conditional tree, they have to process each one. So let, let's say, for example, in a worst case scenario, you had a warp that had 32 threads, but then your your processing tree, your conditional tree had 32 different branches um, on it, right? So there's an if else, but then within the if there are other if else's and other conditions and all this stuff, right? So you basically get 32 different paths that the warp has to take. Well, if you do that, you have basically, um, you, you have basically wasted or, or you're basically taking up 32 cycles just to process that one warp, right? Because again, each, each branch can only be processed in its own cycle. So if you could take your code and condense it from it being 32 branches to just being one branch or even two branches, you're way better and way ahead of the game. Um, on a bigger picture scheme, this could also mean that um, you might need to pre-process your data. So, you know, the threads could be representing of data that you're pushing to the GPU. So what you might need to do is pre-process the data so that you arrange similar pieces of data together so that when you push it to the, to the GPU, all those pieces of data that are similar, that are going to be processed similarly, are, are part of the same set of threads that pull up the 32 threads in the warp, right? So you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you could pre-process the data. So as soon as it hits the GPU, it's really fast because the warps, the warps in one cycle, they just, they just um, accomplish everything. And then you, you know, so you, you, you just group it before you, you push it to the GPU, but that's high level stuff. But, but that is the basic understanding and, and implementation of, of what warp, warp divergence is and, and how you could um, improve your code by minimizing warp divergence. Okay, all right. So let's get into some code. So all things in C sharp and C++ start with main. So here, again, I have, um, you know, CUDA de education device zero. Um, I, you know, it's just an integer I set to zero. And then I CUDA set device. So I, I make sure that the device that I'm using is the first device, you know, my GeForce 1080p uh, 1050 Ti, um, card right this is my environment right here CUDA toolkit 9 windows visual studio community 
edition geforce 1050 ti if you need to install coda toolkit you could watch my previous video um we talk about it um, I, I give you step-by-step -step instructions okay so again my array is 50 million 50 million elements and then uh, our dummy variable just to keep the show going i set to zero i'll show you why i do this but basically i just set it to zero and then i print out the number of integers in your array so you know we're gonna use the 50 million sorry 50 million um elements and then uh number of threads in each block so i just set it to 256 um this is let me just make sure right so notice that this is kind of a multiple of 32 right so this is the number of threads in each block um the standard cuda stuff and um this is uh you know you're setting up the timer so this is how you basically time stuff in CUDA and you could visit this website to get more information on how that is done. Now we just create the variables for the CUDA launch, dim3, type dim3, we're just creating the, the, the block variable and we're declaring how many threads are in the block, you know, standard CUDA stuff. Um, dim3 CUDA education grid, this basically is calculating the number of blocks that we need in the grid. So CUDA Education Grid um, basically declares the number of um, blocks that we're going to have in our calculation. And then I just print out the values that we're using for the CUDA launch, right? Nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, synchronize just to make sure all previous businesses is taken care of. And then now we, we start our recorder and we push to we, we we start our recorder and then we start we launch the kernel right so this is the, the, the CUDA kernel warp divergence on GPU CUDA education grid block and then we pass in our dummy variable and then we stop after we're finished right now let us look at our kernel So pretty much all I'm doing, I passed in my dummy variable and I'm just launching the kernel. Um, I do calculate a linear address um, for the, the actual thread we're tackling. It's not completely necessary in this, in this implementation, but I do it anyway because you guys need to understand why you need to calculate the linear address. And, and its importance, but, but basically it's just the index of the thread in, in, in among all threads that, that the GPU has, has uh, available, right? So it's just, you know, which, which thread in which block is it basically? And the, the linear address basically maps it out for you because it takes into account the current block, the number of blocks and the, the thread ID, right? To, to get a linear address. You could check out this guy right here to get, get more information on that. But this is where the divergence happens now. Start thread warp divergence code. So if you do not comment it out, performance is slow. This is because the warps can only take a single path. So we're gonna take, let's say the if path in each cycle. So if the if path is taken on a given cycle, the threads that are not supposed, that are supposed to take the else path are left idle until the next cycle. Obviously this waste cycle processing power and productivity. That is why the processing time is longer. So when you push this, which basically you're taking the thread ID, dividing it by two, and if it's equal to zero, basically odd and even, right? So if it's odd, um, if it's even, it does this. If it's odd, it does this. Um, I just use the dummy variable just to, to do some actual processing so that you know, the, the, the compiler doesn't, for example, erase all this stuff and says, hey, well, you know, if, if this isn't doing anything and this isn't doing anything, I'm just going to erase the whole statement. So I, I just do some kind of dummy processing just to make sure the compiler doesn't erase it and, and to, to just, you know, do something so that it, it sort of hangs up the, the GPU and you could see the time difference. So 
basically remember there are 32 threads coming in but then you know maybe half of them can do this on one cycle and then the other half can do this on the other cycle and you add warp warp divergence and that's basically it right so yeah you know and now so when you when you do have it it, it it slows up the process but when you comment this out then it it basically um it doesn't uh do anything and you you basically get a faster process. Now, you could also, um, you could also compare it to, let's say, you do this. Oh, it's even faster. <laughs> um, well, you know, just about the same. But when you do some processing here, it's it's now six seconds, right? Like similar to before. So then when I did this guy. seven seconds, right? And then when I take twenty eight seconds. Right, so twenty eight seconds for this. Let let's uh, play some. Let's let's play a game here. Let's let's take out the else statement completely, and see how it affects. Still at twenty eight. Okay, so well, I didn't even have to do the else, I could just do the if, but um, you notice that once I put in a conditional statement, it hampers the processing. Now we're at 29. So that's basically, um, you know, showing warp divergence. And you could you could uh, play around with this as much as you want. I will submit the code and stuff to my website, so you could you could play with it as much. But you know, you always want to make sure everything takes the same path and not have several conditionals, because then it will just mess up your code. Okay. All right, guys. Um, have a great day. Remember to visit the website, Twitter, email, donate, subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right. Have a great day.